Good evening and welcome to the candidate forum for finalists in the search for the Urbana, Illinois City Administrator. My name is Diane Marlin, Mayor of the City of Urbana. This event tonight culminates a nine-month effort and we're very much looking forward to the discussion tonight. I'd like to thank the candidates for the time and effort they've put into this process, our Human Resources Department and city staff for coordinating every aspect of the search, and Slavin and Associates for assisting us every step of the way in the process. I also would like to thank Ileas for sharing their facility with us and their technical support when needed. And finally, I would like to thank you, the community, for providing input and questions that will inform this very important decision. I think it's very appropriate that we have this candidate forum here tonight. You've all voted today to have input into local, state, federal elections, and the process we've been going through the last few months has also been a way, and it has included the community and city staff in the process for, for helping us um, select a person who will have a great impact on our city going forward. So thank you very much for being here. Um, Todd Rent, our HR director, will introduce the candidates in a few minutes and talk about how the forum is going to work. And I have to say it was inspired completely by the wonderful format that the League of Women Voters has used over the years, so you'll recognize that. Um, but I wanted to take a couple of minutes to explain the position of city administrator for those of you who are here tonight and watching on TV. We're being broadcast live on UPTV. It's streaming as well via UPTV, and we're also on Facebook Live. So just about every way we can get this, um, this forum out there, we're doing it. So in Urbana's mayor council form of government, the city administrator reports to the mayor and implements the policies and priorities established by the mayor and city council. If the city were a corporation, mayor is the CEO, the city administrator is the chief operations officer, the COO, who's going to be responsible for overseeing day-to-day -day operations of the city. The position was established in city code in 1975. I believe it was during Mayor Hiram Paley's term. Urbana had a professional administrator until 2007. The position has been vacant for the past 11 years. I strongly believe that Urbana needs professional management and I directed staff to launch a national search shortly after I took office. So we placed advertisements for the position in many outlets, including the Illinois Municipal League, municipal leagues in the area, including the um, International City County Management Association and the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. As I said, it's been a nine month process and, and we, we've been very thorough. 68 resumes were submitted for this position. After the initial screening, we sent questionnaires to 20 um, people. We received 12 written responses, and these were very extensive questionnaires, so I do appreciate the time and thought that went into responding to them. Based on the responses to those questionnaires, we invited five people to participate in video interviews, and based on those interviews, we uh, selected four to interview on site yesterday and today. Yesterday, the candidates uh, went through and survived with flying colors about um, 10, 10 and a half hours of interviews with city staff, department heads, managers, union representatives, city council members. We really tried to get as much input, feedback, and um, exposure as we could for our employees and elected officials. We had an employee candidate forum this noon, similar to what we're doing tonight, where, where employees were invited to submit questions. And then they had um, some, some informal time with the candidates. And we're finishing up tonight with this uh, candidate forum as well. So again, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate your participation. Thank you to the candidates. And Todd Rent will fill you in on how this evening will go. Thank you, Mayor Marlin, and welcome and thank you for everyone who, who, who came out tonight. As we start, I would like to invite everyone to place their phones on silent. Uh, I guess everyone that is, except for Liz Borman in the back, who is our timekeeper. You may hear an alarm go off every now and then. That is 
her alarm for the three minute time period. But everyone else, we would ask that you please place your phones on silent. This evening's proceedings will start with a three minute introductory statement from each candidate. After completion of that statement, the moderator will ask a series of five questions. Each candidate will be given three minutes to answer each question. Our timekeeper in the back will raise a yellow card when the candidate has one minute remaining and the timekeeper will raise a red card when the, when the speaker's time has expired. The candidates will offer their introductory statements in alphabetical order. The order of response to questions will be rotated so that every candidate has the opportunity to answer first, second, third, and so on. At the close of questioning, we will have a brief informal meet and greet period uh, so that you'll have the opportunity to interact with each of the candidates. One additional note on the questions. The questions were drawn from the community surveys that were distributed last week. As of this morning, we had 23 responses. The questions received from the survey were grouped into five categories, general interest in the city administrator role, planning and goal orientation, fiscal responsibility, economic development, and public perception of Urbana. We grouped the questions in this manner to eliminate duplication and to assure that topics of the greatest interest are asked within the available time frame. Today's forum will be moderated by Bob Slavin of Slavin Management Consultants. And I will now introduce the candidates in alphabetical order. And after that introduction, Bob will um, come and, and, and proceed with asking the questions, beginning with opening statements. John Burt has served in local government for over 20 years and is currently the town manager for Groton, Connecticut. Elizabeth Hannon has 21 years of experience in local government and is currently the finance director for the city of Urbana. Angel L. Jones has over 25 years of executive management experience in the public and private sector and is currently a senior consultant project manager at Novad Management Consulting. Carol Mitten has over 33 years of experience in the public and private sector and currently serves as deputy county manager in Arlington County, Virginia. Please welcome the candidates and welcome Bob. Good evening, I'm Bob Slavin. Company I uh, um, own uh, is an executive search firm. We do work in the government sector and, all, and uh, have done a lot of it over the years. And I'm all, uh, what I want to make clear is how much we've enjoyed working for the city of Urbana. We've worked in big and small cities all over the United States in 46 of the 50 states. This has been a real pleasure and a real honor. And I'm very proud to uh, present to you um, these four candidates, and I'm going to get right into it and let them begin the process by uh, making a three-minute inter introduction. And the order in which we're going to do it uh, is uh, alpha to begin with. We'll start with John. John, if you're ready, you've got three minutes. Good evening. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's been my pleasure getting to know your community. Um, I've had a lot of fun here. and It's been a great process. Thank you to everyone who put that, that together. I uh, originally came, was born in Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, lived most of my life in Michigan. Uh, Battle Creek, the Kellogg's Cereal World headquarters. A um, lot of memories of, of cereal tours and uh, events like the world's largest breakfast table, which is it's nice. It's not bacon, but it's nice. You know, cereal's good. Um, went to school for urban planning. I got my master's degree from Western Michigan University. Um, went to Berrien County, Southwest Michigan, as their planner originally. Spent nine years there. Ended as the planning director. Um, we, besides planning, we had uh, geographic information systems, a commercial harbor authority. I've got a lot of experience with dredging, uh, writing legal descriptions. Um, I see uh, community development block grants, housing grants, and uh, a bus system, and recycling. So we did a lot of things there. Uh, when I wrapped up there, I went up to Otsego County in northern Michigan, uh, Gaylord area, uh, a little bit south of the bridge, uh, Mackinac Bridge, that is. Um, I was the county administrator there for 11 years. I had a good experience there, did a lot of things. Um, uh, then I moved on to Groton, Connecticut, town manager, a similar size community, about 40,000 people. Um, 
a lot of things that remind me of, of Urbana. Um, I've had a lot of experience in economic development, a lot of experience with budgets, uh, mostly in a difficult uh, environment. So I've had to do a lot of cutting and coming up with new revenues and other things that um, I, I think make me an ideal candidate here. And the most important thing, I've been married to my wife for 24 years, 25 in December, Stacy. I've got a daughter, uh, Anna, who's 17, and a son, Thomas, who's 14. And any of my free time that I have is spent with them. And um, thank you again for coming. Thank you, John. Elizabeth? Okay. First, let me thank you for being here tonight. Good to know that so many of you care about the future of our community. I'm Elizabeth Hannon. I'm currently the city's finance director. I've been here at the city of Urbana for three and a half years. That's long enough for me to know that this is an organization with great potential, but also significant challenges. I've been in this community for more than 30 years and worked in local government for all of that, almost all of that time, about 29 plus years. Um, I also raised a family in this community and I now have grandchildren who attend local schools here. I live in Urbana with my husband, Mike. A little bit about my professional background. For many years in the city of Champaign, I was the city's budget officer. In that role, it was important for me to develop a broad understanding of city services in order to effectively perform my job. I took the time to develop relationships with city staff at all levels in the organization and also to learn about how the city provides services. I also spent 10 years as a manager in the Public Works Department. I was responsible for managing the parking system, fleet services, recycling programs, and a few other things that probably aren't worth mentioning. So I've been on both the administrative and operational sides of the house. I believe that gives me a unique perspective and a better understanding of how things really work in local government. At the city of Urbana, I've been responsible for developing the city's budget, preparing the financial forecast, implementing new purchasing policies, and participating in labor negotiations, among other things. I know that we're facing some challenging times. The state is redirecting revenues that were previously shared with local governments. We're facing potential property tax caps in the state legislature. Sales tax rev revenues are stagnant. We already have many important needs that are not adequately funded. Just one example, you've probably noticed that we're lagging behind on maintaining our roads. There are many more examples like that. I believe it's critical for the city to engage the community to develop a clear understanding of what's really important to our residents so that we can best shape our future. I'm very goal driven. I will focus on organizational priorities which are set by the mayor and city council. If I'm selected for this position, it will be my job to make sure that the city accomplishes those priorities. I take that responsibility very seriously. You're here because you care about the future of our city. That's the same reason I'm here in front of you tonight. Thank you for being here and thank you for your time. Thank you, Elizabeth. Angel? So much for participating in this process. Thank you. I bring with me a wealth of experience that I've obtained through various cities throughout the United States, most recently being the city of Gaithersburg and the city of Eugene, Oregon. I learned best practices head on by serving and working through issues creatively and trying to find results. I, stand, I, I bring with me three core values that I take with me wherever I go. And those values are respect, service, and equity. Respect being that everyone I encounter, I treat with dignity, even when there may be disagreements. Service, I am committed to public service. This is what gets me excited about going into work every day because it is my passion. Equity, I believe every voice deserves to be heard. And I believe in inclusionary processes in terms of um, facilities, information, and policies. Everyone should have a voice because local government is the place where you can actually touch and see decisions and the impact on individuals and communities. And I like being a part of that. 
I believe that my skills that I have obtained through the various cities are transferable to here. In Eugene, Oregon, much of the similar issues that are, are being uh, faced here with university as a major employer, hospital, we termed it a Unimed community. And we tried to benefit from that relationship by creating partnerships, collaborative opportunities where we could create unified visions across the organization. One of the highlights of one of those partnerships was the success in attracting the U.S. Olympic track and field trials for 2008 and 2012. That same potential exists in this community and I'm grateful to be a part of this process and I look forward to the continuation of the results. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angel. Carol? Hi, everyone. My name's Carol Mitten. I'm from Washington, D.C., and I, as you heard when um, Bob introduced me, I work in, or when Todd introduced me, I work in Arlington County, Virginia. I've had a variety of experiences in my career. I worked for a small business, and then I bought that small business. I had my first experience in local government in Washington, D.C. Then I worked for a quasi-governmental agency when I worked for Amtrak. Then I worked for the federal government in a couple of agencies, and I was really interested in getting back to local government, which is why I'm with Arlington County. But I thought what you might be most interested in um, by way of introduction to me tonight is the uh, relationship that I've had with the communities in my various roles. And while I was uh, st still working in my small business and then overlapping into my service in uh, D.C. government, I was on the Zoning Commission as a mayoral appointee uh, for the District of Columbia, and that's a five-member body. I was on it for eight years. I chaired it for seven. And a big part of what the Zoning Commission does is take testimony and hear from the community in making decisions. And I think the reputation that I built as the chair of the commission was that um, I afforded people the opportunity to speak and we helped people who weren't familiar with the process to make sure that their issues could be heard and then th that our decision making was fair, taking into consideration everyone's perspective. A big part of what the Zoning Commission did in, in the District of Columbia was deal with campus plans. I, I'm sure you have a different setup here, but I mention it because I'm very familiar with the challenges associated with um, communities interacting with large universities. We have Georgetown University, American University, Catholic University, uh, George Washington University, so, um, so that was a big, a big factor. Um, another, uh, another role that I had where I had a lot of community involvement was when I worked at, at the Department of Homeland Security. Even though that's a big, seemingly, you know, monolithic organization, uh, we were building a headquarters in a low-income uh, minority uh, neighborhood, and I was selected for that position explicitly because I had relationships with that neighborhood, and I was the person who would be the face of this large federal agency to these community folks. And that was the role that I played. And so I, I want you to have a sense of the experience that I've had dealing with communities so that you could understand that I, um, I'm a, an, I understand people's need to be heard and that they wanna make sure their concerns have been taken into consideration in decision making. So I thank you so much for coming out tonight and I look forward to the questions. Thank you, Carol. Speaking of questions, that's next on the agenda. Uh, and John, you go first. And the question, first question I have is, why are you interested in the city administrator position and what makes you uniquely qualified for this job? Sure. Uh, first, it's uh, being drawn to generally to opportunities and challenges. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here with the downtown. Um, I understand the importance of downtown. I've served on a uh, City of Gilead Downtown Development Authority for a number of years. Gone, went through a streetscape uh, multi-year project there. Um, I understand how vital they are to the economy. Um, experience with trails and, uh, and uh, connectivity and understanding the needs here for that. Um, it's been fun to go and see. You read about the projects going on here with different trails, and it's been fun to see those and uh, think about my own past experience with similar projects. 
Uh, arts and culture here, you know, are fantastic. That's something that's important to me personally. Uh, quality of schools, I you know, do have school age kids. <laughs> um, like I mentioned, I've got experience with economic development, uh, downtown, uh, downtowns, trails, budgeting, and a, and a wide variety of uh, other similar experiences that would pertain to Urbana. Um, I've run a variety of departments uh, when, they, when I've had vacant staff. Uh, I've got a wide, extensive uh, experience. Um, and just a chance to work with great staff, great community, a great mayor and council. And uh, most important thing to me in the world for a job is to be needed, and I feel like uh, that opportunity is here. And, uh, and just a great place to raise a family. Thank you, John. Elizabeth, would you like me to repeat the question? No. So, as you all, all know, I already do work at the city of Urbana, um, and I've been here for three and a half years, and that's been an excellent experience for me. I've grown to love the people that I work with. I feel like I'm part of a family here. And to be perfectly honest, if I wasn't applying for this job, I wouldn't be applying for any job because I would not be looking to leave the city of Urbana. Um, and I had to think long and hard apply, about applying for this position. I was encouraged by some of my peers to apply for this position and I did a lot of soul searching and I thought about what was required of the job and my experiences and whether I was ready for this position and whether I could um, give the city what it really deserves and needs in this position. And I do think I have, um, I've had experiences in different jobs um, that really add up to many of the things that are responsibilities of this job. So I had responsibility for a $100 million budget in Champaign, um, I've been involved in economic development project, projects, I've been involved in labor negotiations, and in some respects, while we have not had a city administrator, I've picked up some of the things that that person might have done, such as um, leading the budget process and um, leading policy changes like rewriting the city's purchasing policies. So um, I also think the fact that I have that perhaps unusual combination of having been in the administration of a city, but also having 10 years of experience in a public works department is probably rather unique and unusual. And that has given me a different perspective on how, how we do our work as administrators in terms of I have a much better understanding now of how all those policies and procedures and things that we like to do to, to manage the city affect the people in the departments who are actually out on the street and doing the work. Um, so I'm here, I love Urbana. I think I have demonstrated in my previous work that I've done many of the things that are part of this job and um, I respect the mayor's decision. I think I could work with any of these wonderful people up here, but I really like to have this opportunity. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. You ready, Angel? Yeah, Would you definitely. like me to repeat the question? Oh, no, thank you. I have it. I am interested in the position, first and foremost, because I think it aligns with the skills and experiences that I have established in my toolbox. Uh, it allows me to come and, and make sure that I continue to make a difference uh, in communities, work with the highly professional team of educated employees, dedicated employees, an educated community that's involved in the process, and a mayor that's, that's moving the city in a new direction. And, and I can clearly see myself being a part of that initiative. You have city council members that are dedicated to what they do and spend hours understanding what the city's needs are. And I, I feel like I can fit into that. Um, I, I just enjoy, I'm, I'm passionate about working in city government and I've been working as a consultant which, which is definitely a fulfilling uh, career but it's not what drives me, it's not what gives me purpose and I'm trying to fulfill that purpose and so when I did my research and looked at what the city of Urbana was looking for in terms of their next city administrator, I felt that my skills aligned perfectly with what is going to be uh, the need in this community to move it forward. I'm excellent in working in the community, establishing uh, partnerships, uh, looking for collaborative opportunities. Every organization that I've worked in 
has been in a cutback environment. So we've had to be extremely creative in terms of how we balance the fiscal deficit um, using creative methods to do so. I feel like those are welcomed in any environment, but especially one that's looking at a number of challenges that it's going to impact you financially. I've definitely, uh, and I'll get more into that because I'm sure economic development is one of the questions, so I'm not going to use up my time, uh, but, but I will just say that I'm excited about the opportunity and I stand ready to serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Carol? I've lived in Washington, D.C. since I graduated from college, which is 33 years. And I don't undertake the thought of leaving there lightly. And I've, I am considering leaving there because I have built, I've had, I've had a wonderful op set of opportunities that, that have been my career, and no one could have ever mapped them out. Um, and each time I've learned something and I've built a, an interesting set of skills that I really want to make count for something. And I can't do that where I currently work. And it's, it's very frustrating to me. But Urbana is a place that I think I can use those skills to, to, to the way I want to and in a way that I think would be useful to you. One of the things that I believe that government should do, I believe in, in good government and I am a student of good government, an ongoing student of good government. And one of the things that I think government needs to do better at is taking the complicated issues that we confront and communicating them in a way to the general public who doesn't have the time to study a 100-page budget and communicating them in a way so that you can gain understanding about the, the issues that, that your elected officials are facing so that you can help give them feedback from an informed position. So there's a kind of, there's a, there's a kind of transparency which is just disgorging information. And then there's a kind of transparency that is, is um, where people are seeking understanding. I think that government can achieve that and I think it's, it's, um, it's easier to achieve in a community that has a kind of cohesion that you all do. You have a set of values. Those values are commonly held. And you're not so big that you can't um, get folks' attention. In, in, with modern methods of communication, there is, and I'm, I'm glad there's so many different mechanisms that we're communicating with the public tonight. Um, I think we should have a, a much better informed public, but it's incumbent on government to help people gain understanding and not just access to information. So um, I am a strategic thinker, and I would, um, I really want to deploy this, this set of skills that I have built um, for the betterment of a community, and Urbana is a place where I'd like to do that. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Elizabeth? Um, next question. Based on what you know about our city, what do you feel are Urbana's current strengths and weaknesses? Okay. So I, I think one of our biggest strengths is, quite honestly, our staff. I've worked with a lot of really wonderful people at the city of Urbana. They're excited about doing the right thing for the community. Um, and so, you know, right, up, right off the top, that's one of our biggest strengths. Um, I like the, the scale of Urbana. So while on the other side of Wright Street, it seems like they're kind of trying to become a big, big city, um, Urbana feels more like a hometown to me. And I think that's very appealing to certain people. Um, maybe it's not for everyone. Some people like to live in very big cities, but I like the scale of Urbana. It's a very human scale. And I think as a, as a government, our mayor and council um, have made decisions that show that, that they value all the members of our community. And there are some things about our government that are unique um, in terms of um, you know, the care we take with police community relations 
in terms of our interest in the arts, in terms of our looking at social service funding on an annual basis and helping with social service funding. So I think overall we're a caring government. Um, in terms of weaknesses, I, I, as the finance director, I have to say our financial situation is a big one, and that's largely driven by what's happening at the state level, and yet here we are. <laughs> and so it may be driven by what's happening at the state level, but we are forced to deal with it, and so we need to do that in a constructive way. Um, you know, in, in, internally inside the organization, there are um, policies and procedures that are outdated, and sometimes I feel like we're solving the same problems repeatedly, so I think we need to shore up what I think of as that organizational infrastructure, all the routine, really boring stuff that just makes things work smoothly so that we can free, um, we can free ourselves to really deal with the big and important issues that are facing us. Thank you. Angel, do you want me to repeat the question? No, I have it. Thank you. I think so, um, some of the strengths are that you have an engaged community. You have professional and dedicated staff. You have land that the city owns that could be developed. Uh, you have the university, as I mentioned earlier. You have large medical facility that employs a number of people, and it's very stable. The, and that the university and the hospital could be a, both a positive and a negative, because one, the university is not a taxpaying. Um, entity, but you do we definitely need to look at that as a benefit also because they attract a number of businesses and businesses want to be close um, to the resources with the students as well as with the university. So trying to find ways to, to make that work um, is definitely an opportunity and a strength. Some of the weaknesses that, that I've uh, discovered, of course, is the structural deficit um, that the city has, and so fixing that will require a lot of creativity and understanding of, of how to resolve that. Um, there's also a perception in um, some parts where you ask different people what their perception is of the city and you will not always get the same answer. Um, so I think there needs to be some work in that area. Um, some of the other weaknesses would definitely be building better collaborations, um, looking for opportunities to reduce redundancy and um, some of the entities that provide similar services. Uh, there's, it's really unique here in that you have a lot of layers of government in terms of school districts, you have the park district, and the county, and the state, and the, and the city, and they all are taxing entities in different ways, and a lot of it is duplicated effort. So finding ways to have conversations about consolidating services and, and delivering them uh, more collaboratively instead of independently is, is definitely going to be um, a weakness that could be turned into a strength. And um, with that, I'll say that um, I think there's opportunities here and um, I'm looking forward to continuing to have dialogue about it as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Carol? In terms of weaknesses, um, everybody has been stating the obvious, which is that you know there's a there's an imbalance between revenues and expenses, and I and I believe that it's a temporary imbalance. Um, so that's a temporary weakness. Um, the amount of tax exempt property is always going to be a an issue here, and so that means you have to figure out what what are you, what are your what are you uniquely positioned to do and exploit, and I think that is I think there's a lack of of um, coalescence around around the the unique character, and I only think the only reason I say that is because I don't think that the community has been challenged to identify that up to this point. Um, but I think you I think you can identify it, and I think and I think the um, Urbana needs to decide this is who we are, and no one else can be like we can, and that's what we're going to that's what we're going to um, that's what we're going to exploit, and I mean that in a non-pejorative way. And I also think there's a lack of a real economic development strategy, and one that is tied to sort of building your way out of this imbalance. And, and it re really does need a strategic focus in order to be done appropriately. The strengths, um, absolutely the university. Uh, the university provides amenities to this community that you could never afford on your own. 
and um, it's it's a phenomenal um, neighbor partner um, soulmate. Um, the staff, as um, Elizabeth mentioned, is absolutely phenomenal, and they're a wonderful strength. Affordability is a wonderful strength of the community. Um, there are many communities that, and this is again part of a strategy, they start building and then they worry about affordability after the fact when it's too late. Um, the, the fact that you uh, have affordable housing here, you can, um, as you grow, you can ensure that um, affordability is something that's um, maintained for people that need it. You haven't made that many mistakes yet, and I hope you don't. But there's things, and affordability is one, on the transportation side, mistakes can get made. On the development side, mistakes can get made when you don't have, um, when you don't have the, the right kind of design rules in place or you don't have the right kind of zoning in place. And so there's things that you, that you can foresee, mistakes that have been made in other communities, that if you're planful about it, as you, as you embark on this you know, next um, evolution of Urbana, you can make sure that, that you've guarded against those. And then finally, you have a fair amount of undeveloped land here. So you have this, all this latent potential to bring value and grow your tax base. And that's a wonderful strength. It's, a, it's almost like a natural resource waiting to be exploited. So thank you. Thank you. John? This one's where it's hard to go last because so many of the things I've already mentioned, but I'll do my best. Uh, first, uh, and most importantly, um, staff and leadership of the city is obviously a, a great um, strength of the community. Um, dedicated public, I've been amazed how many people I've met that are longtime residents, uh, staff and just the public. Uh, they're dedicated to this community, they like being here, they want to be here, and they're uh, very much supporters of the community. Um, a lot of different things, I, I like the MCOR project, connecting up campus to downtown. You know, that's, that's you know, a great ongoing project, and I really see the value in that. Uh, the park system is phenomenal here. Um, I loved going around today in the tour and seeing some of those. Um, the uh, commitment to bicycles and trails. Almost every time in my career we've done any kind of quality of life assessment or surveys, those are always very high on the list, and you can really tell how, how committed the community, the city is to that. The arts are phenomenal here, you know, got great assets with the arts. Um, obviously, U of I is a, uh, and Carl are both a uh, strength and a challenge through property taxes, but by far a strength. Um, and again, mentioning room to grow. Um, there's lots of room for economic development and for things to happen here. I'm not gonna say weaknesses now, but uh, uh, opportunities. Um, the budget, of course, is uh, a challenge. I, I was up in Otsego County through the downturn. We had to make many tough decisions, and we came out of it, though, much stronger financially by the end and uh, in much better position than where we started. So it can be done. I've been through it. Um, competition for development is obviously uh, an issue here, and um, uh, Lincoln Square is an opportunity. I, you know, I don't even want to, it's definitely a great opportunity. I'm sure we're going to, that the, uh, the, everyone's going to come up with the great ideas and which direction to take that in. And then I think the other opportunity is, uh, I think there's a lot more promotion of the city outside the region that could be done to draw people here and to really get people to come and enjoy the community. So. Thank you, John. Angel, you're up for the next question. <clears throat> you ready? Hey. <laughs> if you were selected for this position, what would you like to accomplish in your first year? I'm sorry, your first week, your first month, and thirdly, your first year. Okay, this is a hard question. Oh, no, Just I take know. the first shot. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna this, say is that. So, <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> well, my first week, I think I'd have to be looking for somewhere to live. <laughs> because, uh, and um, the first month, I, I think that I would be doing a lot of listening and talking to people about what's you know, the priorities are and, and what's in place and trying to identify those strengths. And then by the first year, I think um, recognizing that it's going to take a while to get an understanding of everything about the community. But at that point, I will have definitely vested myself in the community, become an active member. I will have 
found my church by then and, and established my home and started to make connections and establish friends. And then on the work side of the house, I would definitely be starting um, the process of looking at staff strengths, ensuring that succession plans are in place, looking at how we are planning for the future in terms of the skill sets that we will need, working with the mayor and the council to implement the goals and policies that they have set as priorities, um, making recommendations for how we go forward in terms of the initiatives that we're going to have to undertake in order to move forward and address the challenges that we will be facing trying to fi find solutions to the structural deficit as well as looking for opportunities to collaborate trying some of the, the, the things that have worked in other places to see how they would work here, being open to ideas and trying to get um, the word out that we are moving forward, it's a new day, and we're ready to make things happen. Thank you. Thank you. Carol? Since I had the three minutes that Angel was speaking to put something together, <laughs> um, I, I would divide it in, in, in this way. In my first week, I would just spend my time introducing myself and meeting people, because um, that's, that's about the most you can hope for. Um, in the first month and in the months to follow, um, I would spend time learning about the community. And uh, you, you have many plans, you have many things that have gone on, and it would be, as, as, as an outsider, um, it's, it's essential that I would understand not only what the written word says, but the thinking behind it and some of the history of community processes or political processes that have led to um, your plans and, and, and so forth. And then at the end of the first year, I think by, by then I would be in a position to help um, create a strategy around economic development, around um, the budget and, and an approach to the budget because you have the advantage of seeing and it's in part because of the work that Elizabeth has done, that you, you, you're seeing ahead into the future, so you can, it's, it's not a, a reactive thing, it should be a thoughtful approach on um, what the next three to five years is gonna look like um, on, the, on the service side and the staffing side and on your ability to generate additional revenue. So, um, introduction, learning, strategy. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. John? Uh, again, you know, uh, getting to know facilities and staff, getting to know where everything is, uh, finding the uh, best hamburger in town, that's critical in the first week. Uh, I'm a terrible eater, burgers are my favorite. Uh, it did go to uh, Broadway today. It was a, a good recommendation from the mayor and others, and uh, it was for very good food today. Um, first month dialoguing with staff, the council, the mayor, learning um, where we've been, where we're going, what the needs are, what the opportunities are. Uh, you have done extensive reading, but it's not the same as talking with the people that have been here. Um, getting involved in the community, uh, me, my wife, and even my kids are, have always been extensively involved in every community and would jump into it here right away. One year from now, um, I'd like to see uh, you know, a lot of progress on Lincoln, on Lincoln Square and where that's heading, um, work on promoting the town. Uh, have, uh, I'm doing a lot of work with that where I'm at now, and we, we have uh, a lot of steps in place that we're heading for how to promote Groton. Um, as part of the you know, budgeting, seeing a lot of progress in the budget is important. I'd like to do a survey of community needs, uh, what their uh, prime services, what the, what's important to the community, um, because there's probably going to be there's going to be some hard decisions to be made, and uh, there's got to have that. We have to have that dialogue with the community, um, and that's about it. Elizabeth, this would be a challenging question for you. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is a challenging question. Well, I'm, I'm going to say, even though I've been here three and a half years, um, I've been working very long hours trying to put some things in place for the finance department. And I honestly haven't had the opportunity I would like to go out and visit with our staff and other departments. And that's something I've had the opportunity to do in other jobs. So I would also want to do that, even though I've been here a while. Um, you know, spend some time visiting with the public works crews, you know, riding on a snowplow when that opportunity presents itself, um, doing ride-alongs with police officers, um, doing, um, you know, spending some time at the fire department and, go, and running calls with them. Because I, I think um, to really manage things effectively, you really need to understand how it works um, 
down at that level. Um, I, I'd, al I'd also really like to attend the Citizen Police Academy, which I have not previously had the opportunity to do. Um, and that would be something that I would like to continue periodically on an ongoing basis for as long as I was in this position, just to stay in touch with what's going on. Um, within the first month, I'd really like to be forming teams around the six new council priorities. And I'd like to designate a person to be the lead on each of those priorities and a team to work with them to develop an action plan that we could review and discuss with the city council so that we are clear in our, our minds about how we're going to accomplish those, those things that the council has given us to do. Um, and, um, you know, then of course, once we have a plan, we should be acting on it and we can hold people accountable to the plan. Um, within the first year, I mean, gosh, I've been on the inside, so I, I have a few things that, that I can think of. Um, I'd really like to standardize um, the documents that we're giving to council. There's no standard, standardization on the council report, so we're consistently providing the same kind of information. And I'd like to centralize the review so they don't leave a department and get on the council agenda without additional review by the city administrator and our um, city attorney. I'd like to be <coughs> talking about what leadership means in the city organization internally so that we can articulate that to all of our staff and hold them accountable. Um, I would also like to be working on an economic development plan because what I've seen is, you know, currently we're kind of acting on what people put in front of us, but I think we need to think, think more strategically and we need to know where we're hoping to go so that we can make the right choices because if we make the wrong choice, we may be closing the door on another opportunity that may be more important. Um, so gosh, I'm sure there's a million other things, but I think that's a pretty good list. Thank you, Elizabeth. Carol, you're up. Okay. How have you encouraged economic development and population growth within your city, and what has been the outcome? I answered this this afternoon, so it's going to sound familiar to some people. Um, the uh, in Arlington County, I oversee uh, one of the departments I oversee is Arlington Ec Economic Development. So I work closely with them. And in Arlington County, we don't have to encourage. Uh, population growth. It's coming because um, we have really excellent schools and we are adding um, kids to schools at a rate that they're, we are building schools um, on an ongoing basis. It's part of the reason why we have a budget challenge in Arlington because um, so much money is going to school construction. But our challenge is a little bit different, which is um, we're concerned with the growth of the of the commercial tax base because it's been, the value of it has been eroded by um, very high office vacancy. So um, at the time that I started in Arlington County, the, um, the manager also hired a new economic development director. And prior to that time, they had just been watching the commercial vacancy rate go up without really taking any action. They just thought, well, we're Arlington County, people just want to be here. And it's like, well, evidently they don't because they're leaving. So, uh, so um, Victor, the new economic development director, um, with his staff, devised a strategy that was based on the strengths, the existing strengths of the Arlington um, tenant mix, and um, we what what we call it is building a tech ecosystem. So we had uh, some of the federal agencies that we have are very research oriented, and so we were build we, we were building. Um, an ecosystem that would support certain um, kinds of technologies, um, medical technology, educational technology, um, big data, things like that, because they're growing so much. And the, the ecosystem that we're building is um, support from institutions, educational institutions, um, sources of capital, startups, we have accelerators, incubators, and so forth. And so the idea is to build more of a web of um, relationships among those companies and not be as tied to the federal government as we have been in the past. And by creating that web, there's more strength if any part of it becomes weak because we're not betting on one sector or one company. So our strategy has been to provide incentives on a very selective basis 
with very strict parameters around return on investment. And that has, that has served us very well, and we have a very high-touch approach in economic development so that we have, rather than handing money to people, we deliver relationships. Thanks. Thank you. John? Uh, start in uh, Otsego County up in Gaylord, Michigan. Um, things were going gangbusters before the downturn, and then the, the whole economic picture changed. Uh, one of the things we did uh, at that point was we've been hearing a lot of negativity that our building department was difficult to work with, which uh, the first thing you want to make sure is you're welcoming to the business community. We retooled that and uh, reached out to a lot of different developers and uh, uh, contractors and others and had a series of meetings talking about what we're doing and you know help us get the word out there that you know we're open for business um, I was on the I spent 11 years on the board of that of an economic alliance there um, one of the critical things we did there is uh, I was heavily involved in uh, 60 first of all retaining the businesses you have while you're especially during that downturn don't lose what you have um, and then expansion, 60 to 70% of job growth comes through expansion of existing businesses. So we did uh, regular retention calls, what can we do to help you grow? And uh, that's where we saw most of our, most things come to fruition was through that. Uh, it was on a Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. We used Brownfield uh, using tax increment financing to clean up properties, uh, for instance, an old city dump, and then uh, putting businesses on those properties. Uh, we had success with that. Um, and then my activity in the D Downtown Development Authority for for Gaylord spent uh, two to three years working on a streetscape project. We had a uh, downtown that was bisected by a state highway. People would only go to one side or the other, they wouldn't cross. And so we spent years working on a plan for how to improve that and uh, didn't get to everything we wanted, but we, we were successful in putting pedestrian islands in and uh, entertainment nodes for festivals downtown and a bunch of other things. Uh, and, and it all came out. And then once, as we exited the downturn, we started seeing a whole lot of more businesses coming into the community. Uh, in Groton, uh, we're trying to streamline things, make things again uh, accessible to developers. We're in the, we've uh, passed an ordinance to combine. We have a separate planning commission and zoning commission. We're combining those. Uh, and we're also in the middle of rewriting our zoning ordinance to make it easier to develop there. Um, we have, we've moved our, a health official to be by our planning department so when plans come in, they can review those plans. We've, we're moving a fire marshal there too so they can review plans again to get things sped up and get people through the process. Um, we're putting in, we're, we've got a plan for wayfinding signage. We're 30, over 30 square miles in our town, so it's, uh, and there's a lot of access points to the town, so we're, it's hard to get around and know where you're going, and so we're working on wayfinding signage. Um, marketing efforts, we've been putting together a plan for how we're going to market more. Uh, we're about two hours from Boston, so a lot of our efforts are going to be focused out of Boston, Boston for working with developers there, but we've got plans in place for that. Um, we've got a bunch of defunct school buildings that we're marketing actively now to, uh, to uh, uh, some of them are a couple of, you know, are really nice buildings that will be renovated and uh, have great views of the ocean or the rivers there, and then others will be torn down, but then we're looking at using uh, tax increment financing, which we just got put in place there. That's pretty new in Connecticut. Um, you don't see a lot of TIF yet in Connecticut. It used to be only, you had to go through the state to do it, no one wanted to do that, but now they've changed the rules and, oh, I'm done, sorry, I just red flag. But, so, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, John. Elizabeth. Okay. Well, well I, as I said earlier, and I think more than, more than one of us has made this point that we need an economic development plan, um, I think part of that plan has to be thinking about what kind of development is right for Urbana. Because development, just for the sake of having development, you know, it might increase your tax base and it might grow your population, but we need to think about what's the right fit for Urbana. Um, we do have an excellent economic development staff at the city. I've been um, our, our participant on, you know, working with them on several development um, projects, working on the financial analysis side of it and discussing the risks and benefits of various projects. Um, when I was in Champaign, I was involved in several development projects. I was on the team that um, worked on the agreement related to the one main development, which I'm sure you all know was a pivotal development in the turnaround of downtown Champaign. And I was um, very um, proud, of, proud of that project and um, how it really drove an awful lot of change 
in downtown. And then I also um, worked with other staff on the M2 development directly across the street. And also um, part, of, part of that was constructing a parking deck that's owned by the city. And then um, as since I at the time was responsible for the parking system, I had to staff that and implement it and deal with all the things that go with um, getting a parking deck up and running and managing that. Um, but that was really also critical to what has happened in downtown Champaign because we realized that if we, if we built just enough parking for the M2 project, then what was gonna happen when the next development opportunity came along and we were out of parking again? And so we intentionally, thoughtfully um, constructed that a little bigger than what was needed for that project. Um, so um, as part of those projects, I've worked, you know, with TIF funding and, you know, bonding for development projects and a whole lot of um, complicated financial stuff. Um, so, but overall, I, I think the big, the big question here for me is really what's the development that we want for Urbana? What is our plan going to be moving forward? And then as these, as these opportunities come up, we can evaluate them in line with that plan. And I also have to say I'm, I'm very excited about um, the mayor's visioning process for Lincoln Square. I'm rather fond of Lincoln Square. I, I, it's a very... Um, open, light, and bright space, and so I hope there's something good in store for that site. Thank you, Elizabeth. Angel? Yes, um, economic development has been a priority in every city that I've served, and, and we've used a variety of methods to look at economic development, from the perception and branding of the city to uh, working with HUD to create new property developments within our downtown core. We were successful in, in doing so because one, we had identified the need, we were able to substantiate and validate how the city could absorb those projects. And as a result, HUD was impressed with the city's understanding of its needs and, and how it was going to be able to address that. And then they were able to give us the funding that we needed at a time when funding was extremely limited. This was in 2009 and 2010, which was right in the crust of the economic downturn. In the city of Eugene, Oregon, um, the city had a very negative perception, um, and so we worked on rebranding that city, and, and I came up as, as a part of the arts and the culture that they had available there and stated that, you know, led a campaign to change the perception, and we start calling ourselves the world's greatest city of arts and outdoors. Now, we got a lot of feedback for that because, of course, <laughs> everyone was saying, how can Eugene be the greatest city of arts and outdoors when you think of all the cities that have a wealth of arts and outdoors? But we didn't let that stop us. We made that our focus and said, if we're going to claim it, then maybe we can start to achieve it. And it helped because we were able to start looking at a, a working in collaboration and, and starting to get projects started at a time where we couldn't get anything started because developers would avoid um, the city because of the perception and because of the fear that it was not open for business. And as we all know, time is money for business and they, they wanna be able to, to come in and get things done rapidly. Uh, in the city of Gaithersburg, we, we noticed that it, we had projects that were approved but were not moving anywhere. So we were able to evaluate why those projects weren't moving. We went back to the developed developers to ask them why they weren't moving and we identified reasons that we could change whether it was in our zoning laws or whether it was addressing competing priorities but the one thing I will say is is you definitely do not need to look at an economic development in, it, in a vacuum it's a, it's a comprehensive approach as to how you're going to take it and it starts with the minimum of the perception of the city to the perception of safety in the city and then working together to use the assets that you have to attract the growth in a smart growth manner because not only are you making decisions for today but the decisions you make today you don't want to create problems for the future and you have to think of your infrastructure and the wear and tear that's going to occur so they need to be planned and so with that I'd say I'm gonna wrap it up because I don't want that sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Unless we want to play a little round of musical chairs, I think John's in the seat that goes next, uh, and so you'll you uh, we'll get the next question first. Um, and that is, what approach would you take in prom to promote Urbana in a more positive light in the media and throughout the community? And how would you tell Urbana's story?
Well, once, uh, of course, first get to know the community thoroughly and know all its assets and what there is to promote. Um, but, uh, you know, some, somewhat looking at marketing efforts similar to what I'm doing, what we're looking at in Groton um, of uh, working with, uh, for instance, we're, we're, we're looking at working with a marketing company to get the word out on what, what there is there, what the assets are. Um, uh, just getting that message out, using social media as much as possible. Um, you can never use enough social media nowadays to get the word out. It's long ranging. Um, you know, I've talked to different businesses about how do they, you know, I'm interested in, uh, for one thing, uh, diversity is one of my goals for employee base. I've talked to different uh, companies that have that same uh, goal and about how to achieve it. And it uh, still comes down to social media to them that, you know, you get enough people um, following you and you can get the word out, you can get the information out. Um, but uh, again, just getting a strategic plan in place on how to tell the story. So. Thank you. So, so I'm gonna say our, our, our new mayor's been the best PR we could have because she seems to be everywhere at every event promoting Urbana. Um, but I, I do think we could probably make more effective use of social media, um, and you need, and I think you, you need to use multiple streams. You need to use, you know, Twitter, Facebook, whatever else is out there these days, because there are people who pay very close attention to that, and just getting out, you know, the good things that we do. Um, you know, so if if uh, the, the fire department a couple of weeks ago had a you know amazing rescue when somebody was trapped in a grain bin, and because we have the technical rescue team in the area, they were um, they were called to the scene and were able to save that person's life, and so that that immediately I think went out on social media. So spreading the good news about all the good things we do is very important. We also work very closely with the Urbana Business Association. We work closely with the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation. Um, we work closely with um, Visit Champaign County. I wanted to call it the Convention and Visitors Bureau, but it hasn't been that for a few years. Um, and so they also help us to get the word out. I think we need to get staff out in the community and involved and in spreading the word about all the good things that Urbana has to offer. And I'm gonna give you um, an example um, from, from when I worked in Champaign. We, we, one of my responsibilities was the parking system. And we spent a lot of time talking with the parking enforcement officers about the fact that often the only contact somebody is ever gonna have with the city is with a parking enforcement officer, right? They, maybe it's maybe and maybe it's not really you know starting off as a good contact. Maybe they got a parking ticket, or maybe they just stopped and asked for directions. But for many people, one person is maybe the only contact they ever have with the city, and so the impression we make is very important when we have that that contact. And we spend a lot of time working with them on you know we realize you're in the in an enforcement role but how do we make that a positive experience for people when somebody has a question about why you wrote them a ticket how do you handle that um, we implemented the first ticket free um, you know where it was basically a warning notice and we also then engaged them in ongoing customer service training because we were really looking at them as sort of ambassadors um, for the city who were out in the community and having a lot of public contact. And so I think those opportunities exist throughout the organization and we should take advantage of them. Thank you, Elizabeth. Angel? Uh, this ties right into what I described for the city of Eugene, Oregon in terms of branding. Um, I, there are a lot of positive things and it's finding that niche. It's understanding what that niche is and how you're going to market the city. Uh, in Richmond, Virginia, they were the best collegiate city for sports. In Gaithersburg, it was a character counts city. And of course, I, I've already discussed uh, Eugene, Oregon. I, I think it's important um, to know what your niche is and to know what you, ha what you do best, and then to be bold about it and, and put it out there as a, as a brand to encourage um, others to come and experience that excitement. Um, the other thing that, that I do to get out the positive message is to establish um, regular meetings with the media. Um, they always come when there's a problem, but in, if you start feeding them information before there's a problem, you have a better relationship and you can somewhat uh, control the story. Um, it's been very important to me that you have that relationship 
and that it's, um, they understand they want information and you want them to have the information because not only will they report the bad information, but they will start reporting what you want uh, reported if you establish that relationship. So I found that to be very effective um, as part of whole, the whole collaboration and ensuring that you're using all the resources you have available is working very positively uh, with the media. And with that, I'm going to say I'm Thank you, Angel. Finished. Thank you. <laughs> Carol. As to how, uh, how to tell Urbana's story, I think you need to decide what Urbana's story is. Maybe, maybe you have, but it's not as, as crystal clear to me as an outsider as maybe it could be. And there would be different audiences for what that story is. If you're trying to get people to come and move here as residents, that might be one story or one angle on the story. And then if you want businesses to come, that's a different angle. And then for visitors, it's yet another thing about, you know, um, place making and so forth and amenities that you have to offer here and, and why, why Urbana. Um, I think those messages are different. I think you have a wonderful opportunity to deliver those messages in a variety of ways and whatever, whatever the media are that, that, you know, whether it's social media, print media or, or whatever, but you have a, a whole bunch of people that come here all the time, either looking at the University of Illinois as a place for their kids to go to school, or parents of students. And that's a great marketing opportunity that I don't know that you're exploiting. Oh, did the mic go off? Yeah, it went off. Oh, did, did they do something? Maybe you need to get close to it. <laughs> Nice try. <laughs> Do I have to start over? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm um, using the opportunity for the parents and visitors um, that, that come here as, as a marketing opportunity. Um, and I think, you know, I agree with what Elizabeth said that, you know, s staff, they're ambassadors. The residents, I think, I think once we understand that we're all in this together and why it's important um, to advance the city, everyone is an ambassador. And um, we need to recognize that. And I also think there's opportunities for partnerships. And I'll, I'll give this example. I told the story earlier today. Arlington County had this had this had has a tenant, and it's um, the Commuter, co computer, commu bleh, Consumer Electronics Association. It, it since has a new name, but you'll recognize it better that way. And they every year they have a show the commuter. Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It's okay. a, one of the big conventions that takes up the entire convention center. And we didn't pay much attention to them. They're just an association. But one day, AED staff, they made a, they made a call just to say, hey, what's going on? They get talking and they're like, hey, did you ever come to our, did you ever come to our conference in Las Vegas? And we said, no, and they said, just come on. Just, you know, you, you pay to fly out, we'll give you space. And what that led to is that Arlington County is the only city jurisdiction marketing themselves at the Consumer Electronics Show. We do it for free um, because we're given the space gratis. And now we're bringing some of our startups and young companies out there to get exposure. There are lots of relationships that are just hidden in plain sight. And I'm confident that, um, that those are things that can lead to a success for Urbana. Thanks. Thank you, Carol. That concludes the question uh, part of the, uh, of the uh, event tonight. And I want to thank the four of you for uh, not just this evening, but for everything that you've uh, uh, contributed of your time and effort and skills and intelligence and, uh, and interest uh, over the last couple of days. I think they deserve a great round of applause. Thank you, Bob, and a thank you again to the candidates. It's been two long and grueling days. But it's over. But it's over. We've encouraged the candidates to get rest and, and done our best to try and assure that's happened. I, I hear that there were some meetings that occurred during the rest period, um, but that's okay. These are very hardworking people, and 
you know, the, the amount of um, um, friendliness that they've displayed uh, amongst and between each other and the sharing of ideas uh, uh, as we go forward with this process. You know, as a human resources person, you always want to give the decision maker a very difficult decision. And Slavin, the Slavin consultants and the human resources staff, uh, I think really um, we are able to present the mayor with a very difficult decision here. And I, and I think that that is a good thing for the city of Urbana. So two requests as we wrap up tonight. The first request is this. Uh, in your packet or the, the handouts that you received today, you received a yellow candidate evaluation form. We would ask that you take the time to fill that form out. Uh, the mayor is very interested in hearing your feedback. Uh, you'll notice there's no place for your name uh, because we want to get a, as candid a feedback as possible through the process. And so we'd ask that you would complete that form. And we have uh, a little yellow placard there with an arrow. If you can place your forms there as you leave, we would be greatly, we would greatly appreciate that. And then secondly, I would just ask that as, as you are, uh, as we're closing the program, that you would take the time to come up and uh, meet the candidates, talk to them a bit, and let them know how much we appreciate them coming. Uh, and again, uh, Mayor Marlin, did you have anything to add? Just a couple of observations. First of all, you can tell this wasn't a political forum because the candidates actually stopped talking when their time was <laughs> up. <laughs> and that doesn't always happen. <laughs> and secondly, I just want to express my appreciation once again for the thoughtfulness that you, that you all have brought to this process. And, and there have been unexpected benefits. Number one, we, I think we as a city, city staff, people who have interacted with the folks over the last couple of days, I, we have learned a lot. And actually the process that we went through has um, encouraged our own staff to build connections that weren't there before. So for example, the, um, we had people, staff members in, in teams of two, each take a candidate in a separate vehicle and, and do a tour of the city. And our uh, HR department, in their wisdom, paired people from different departments. So we had fire department and community development members who, who literally work a few feet away from each other across the hall, had not met each other or knew anything about each other. They were teamed up, and by the end of the tour, the fire department was planning a pancake breakfast for community development people. So I think that was an unexpected benefit and a great um, example for us to follow going forward. So you brought us closer together. So thank you very much. And again, thank you for coming, and um, feel free to spend a few minutes with the candidates, and then we'll let them rest. <laughs> thank you very much.